Did you know that 87% of first impressions are influenced by your attire? No, God! And a suit is the most common of them all. So before you make a suit purchase, here are some tips and tricks that will not only save you money, but ensure you make a lasting impression every time you step out in style. So let's start things off by defining what is a suit. A suit is a jacket and a pair of trousers made from the same material. Notice I didn't say materials that are close or materials that match. That could be a navy blazer and chinos, or it could be a sports jacket and a pair of odd trousers, but that's not a suit. Now, the steps to purchase your first suit are simple. Know the style pyramid. First up, gentlemen, nail the fit. Never purchase a suit that doesn't fit you. Next up, pay attention to the function. You want to look overall, does this suit my needs? If you need a business suit, you want to go with something that's classic, something that's conservative. Then look at the fabric. So you want to look at the quality of the fabric. You want to look at the build, the details that went into the stitching. These small things may seem small initially, but if you don't nail the style pyramid, you're going to end up purchasing a suit which is not going to serve you. Custom versus off the rack suits. Which one do I prefer? First off, let's lay off some definitions. So off the rack, it's pre-made at a set size and this is what we see out there the majority of the time. Now, if you get a suit tailored, this is an off the rack suit that is adjusted to fit you better. Now, on the custom side, you're going to hear a couple terms, bespoke and made to measure. The difference is bespoke is more of the artistry. You've got hand sewn. These will take months to build. Now, made to measure is where they bring in machines. This is actually still made for the individual, but it's much more streamlined. First up, let's talk about suit fit. Off the rack versus custom. Who's going to win here? Guys, easily custom. But let me talk about off the rack. How can you get a good fit with off the rack suit? Because that's most of the options out there. I'm going to say find a brand that suits your body type. This is difficult, but it's possible. So you got to get tailored adjusted. Maybe the sleeves were a bit long. Maybe it's too large or too small in the torso area. So you get it adjusted. But there's always going to be something usually off with an off the rack suit. Most people know they're going to compromise. But if you don't want to compromise on fit, that's when you want to look at custom. Because let's say you've got a rounder torso, you got a bigger stomach, you are a really tall guy, you're a smaller guy. In that case, custom is going to suit you better because just simply they're going to be able to build that clothing to fit your body type exactly. So the first step in buying a suit is to make a decision. Are you going to buy it online or are you going to buy it offline? Now, why is this a tough decision? Because it really depends on do you want selection? The best selection, it's always going to be online. But if you want speed, you need something today. Guess what? You're going to need to walk into a store. And let's talk about convenience. Nothing beats buying online. At two o'clock in the morning, in your underwear, drinking a beer, you can buy a custom suit if you want. But when it comes down to customer service, it's really tough to beat the in-person higher-end menswear stores because you can walk in there and for 30 minutes, you can talk to a knowledgeable person who can look at you, immediately tell your body type and be able to identify which suit, not only color, but the style is going to best work on your body. So which one's better, online or offline? And guys, it really depends on your particular need. So how much to spend? Again, this is your first suit or your first suit in a while, but you want something nice. You want something that makes you look like a million bucks between $200 and $2,000. All right. So I know that's a pretty big $1,800 range. Let's go ahead and get specific. So you want to take your monthly salary and you want to budget approximately half of that. And that budget, by the way, is not just for the suit, but also what goes with it, the shoes and the shirt, which we'll talk about later. Now understand the real price range of suits is much wider. We're talking from free to well over $5,000. Yes, free. Simply ask your friends, family, anyone have a suit that I could have? So let's talk about the high end. Saville Row. You go to some of the best tailors in the world. Yeah, you're going to spend over $5,000. What we're talking about is that happy medium area where I think most of you can find a great looking suit. Now you're going to hear the words off the rack, custom and bespoke. I'm going to say right now, ignore bespoke. I love it. This is the artistry, but that's going to be much higher in price. Custom, I think is a great option if you're hard to fit, but for most people, probably off the rack is going to work just fine and you're going to find the best deals there. So why go custom? Because you care about fit, you care about the style and you care about fabric. So the fit, guess what? If it's custom, it's only made to fit one person, you. If you're tall, if you're short, if you're big, if you're small, if you're a combination of those, guess what? Custom suits don't care. They're going to be built exactly to fit your measurements and your measurements alone. Or if you're really particular, you have seen this fabric and you want that particular sports jacket, you want that suit in that fabric, guess what? Custom is the way to go because you're just simply going to be able to choose the fabric, then get the exact style. Again, you're particular. You want 
peak lapels. You want hacking pockets. You want, you know, an inside really unique lining. You can get it when you go custom. The second thing to know about custom suits is it is a process. You can't get that suit same day. In fact, this can be a multi-week process. They're making this thing from scratch and understand that sometimes there are multiple fittings. You're going to have to get measurements. This is something, especially the first time you do it, that it's going to take a bit of extra time. But if you care about getting the exact style you want, the exact fabric, the fit spot on, then the process is definitely worth it. Make sure the people or the team or the person you're dealing with has good communication skills because guess what? You have this vision of what you want this custom suit to look like, how you want it to fit. And if they don't ask you the right questions, they're going to build you a monstrosity. They're going to go, they're going to think, oh, this guy wants the modern slim fit. You thought you were going to get something a little bit looser, but it, you know, that would fit your big build. All of a sudden you get the suit and you're like, oh my gosh, what happened here? Communication is key. So make sure that they've got a great communication skills, that they speak your language. That's what we're looking to do is reduce mistakes. Next up, know what you want. So many guys go in to buy custom and they do not know what they want. And if you run into a salesman or you work with someone that really has your best interests in mind and can direct you, that's great. But that doesn't happen all the time. And you want to make sure you're not led astray. Not, you know, on purpose, but that person doesn't, he can't read your mind. So you want to make sure you've got laid out exactly what you need. If you just graduated law school and you're taking that first job over in downtown Chicago, you're going to be at that top law firm. If you're going to be wearing a suit daily, find out what they wear to the law office. But by knowing that, you'll be able to build the wardrobe you need. But maybe you need sports jackets. Maybe you need odd trousers. And it's going to make everyone's job easier when you can give more specific information about what you need. Now, that being said, this next point incredibly important and that is have one garment made at a time. And I'm talking one suit made, one shirt made, one vest made. Why don't you want to have like five suits or 10 shirts made? Because what if, if this is the first time they're making it, you want to make sure they nail the fit. You think that, hey, I wanted to be able to put two fingers right in here. And the guy who was measuring you thought that you didn't want to be able to put anything, but you don't want to actually get 10 shirts that are made that way because that guy may argue. He may say, hey, no, no, this is what you asked for. And then all of a sudden you've got an issue. Ask for one shirt, ask for one jacket, ask for one set of trousers, and you should be able to go through more multiple fittings to be able to get exactly what you want on the fit. And that takes us right to our next point, fittings. So fittings are natural, especially when you're just starting off. Your first garment, you can expect to have one to two fittings as they work to get it perfect. The shirt, yeah, it may be a little bit too loose, a little bit too tight in and around the neck. Maybe you want the sleeves a little bit longer. This is when they're going to take note of this. They're going to say, hey, I'd like a little bit slimmer on the sleeve and they will be able to take it in and make those adjustments. The key point here is that they not only make the adjustments, but they also adjust your pattern. You want to ask about this because when they adjust your pattern, then this is something they'll be able to replicate the garment. You don't want them to replicate a mistake. You want to make sure that if you have those adjustments made, they adjust the pattern and then all your future suits, all your future sports jackets, guess what? They're going to fit perfectly because you did the work up front. Jens, if you want to step up your style efficiently and effectively, look for a proven path, a curriculum that saves you from confusion, from bad information, from crappy teachers. You want to make sure that you're not just learning facts, but you actually are being shown concepts, lessons that give you foundations. They give you the fundamentals to be able to dress sharp in any situation. It's also great if you can surround yourself with like-minded men, because how many times have you tried to learn something and there are other people that don't want to be there, they're distracting you, or worse, they're tempting you to go do something else, which is why, gents, I wanted to show you this my new free group for you that not only has instruction, but an amazing community that is distraction free. It's got a great app. And did I say it's free guys? I developed this for you. Finally, I found a platform that makes this so simple, so easy and so effective for you to be able to step up your style. Seriously, gents, I've got courses in this community that I used to sell you can get for free. I've set up prizes. I've gamified it. Guys, I'm going to link to it down in the description. Or if you just want to go over to the URL, it's at school.com slash RMRS. This group is free, although you do have to answer three questions. These I don't ask for your email address. I simply want to make sure that we keep spammers out of the group. It's a high quality group. It's an amazing community that I am proud to give to you guys. So now let's get into the details. Yeah, we're going to go deep down the rabbit hole. First up, talking about suit fabric choice. So there are four things when you're looking at fabric that you want to pay attention to. So first up, 
the color. What color suit should a man go with when he's just starting off, when he's building his wardrobe, when he's looking for his go-to suit? Should you go with navy? Should you go with blue? Should you go with gray? Should you go with black? Well, to answer this question, let's first eliminate the suit that I do not recommend, and that's going to be black. So, the reason I don't recommend black suits is the color's too formal. This is for black tie. This is for white tie. This is not for suits. Suits are not formal. Believe it or not, suits are actually, you know, this is something you could wear in a bit, you would want to wear in a business environment, but not with a black color. It's too hard of a contrast. It's going to be more difficult to match it with items. It's just going to overpower a lot of different complexions out there. I don't recommend this for a first suit. You can try these eight suit colors for your first one. Number one, what do you think is the most common, the most versatile suit? And this is probably very North American because you could argue number one and number two, I might as well say them together, navy blue, charcoal gray. Navy blue number one, charcoal gray number two. Now that's my own personal preference. Why do I put navy blue number one? Well, throughout the United States, this is the de facto color. If you walk into any store, you're going to see it. The great thing about that is because it, there are so many out there, you can wear this and if your goal is to fit in, if your goal is to not draw attention to yourself, if your goal is to just go in there, do a great job and be recognized for the effort you put in, then navy is fine. Another great thing about navy, because it's so versatile, in a sense, you're able to, if you're going to get something custom made, if you're going to get something uh, that's cut to fit you. If you're going to go with something that's a little bit more fashion forward, you can actually have fun with some of the style aspects, but keep it in that simple navy blue and actually it's not going to stand out too much. So, an example, I knew a gentleman that ordered a two-button navy blue suit for me, but the one thing he did, he went with peak lapels on all of his jackets and it actually looked really sharp. Now, a lot of people would not necessarily know it looked like a normal navy suit, but the fit was impeccable and he had those peak lapels and it was something that I, I thought it was a really nice look. Now, let's go to charcoal gray. Now, charcoal gray and one of the things against navy is that it can make a young man look a bit younger. Now, charcoal gray, if you're a young man, this is a great color for you. It's going to add a bit of age to you, make you look a little bit more respectable. It's very easy to match and that's the great thing. Because it's on the gray, the black and white scale basically, it has no color in it. So, you can match it with a wide range of colors. And the problem with that though is if you're an older man, if you're a light colored man, then gray almost can pull some color out of you. So, you got to be careful with it. However, it is incredibly versatile just like the navy suit. It is one of the most common suits out there sold and you can pretty much find a charcoal gray out there all over the place. So, we've talked about navy, charcoal gray. What is number three? Gray. Okay, there is a difference between charcoal gray and gray. Talking about Cambridge gray, this is medium gray, so it's going to be a little bit lighter than charcoal and Cambridge gray is just as versatile as charcoal and I like these three suits at the top because if you had these three and if you were to double them, change up a few things on the style, so all of a sudden you have six suits, you could triple them and change up a few other things on the style, maybe change, you know, add a ticket pocket here or there, uh, change up, you know, go with the lapel, go with the three button versus a two button, maybe throw in a double breasted, all of a sudden you have nine suits, three different colors and to be honest, that would be a very, very versatile wardrobe. Now, medium gray, Cambridge gray, it is not as formal as charcoal gray or even navy blue because it is a little bit lighter, but to be honest, we're, there are very few places in the world where that is ever going to become an issue. So, you can pretty much wear it any place you would wear the other top two suits. Now, we get into suit number four, which is light gray. Light gray is distinctively lighter than its brethren. This is great for summer, fall, spring wear, not so much winter, you know, it's just something that you don't want to be wearing light colors in the winter. Uh, I mean, you couldn't stand, you can stand out, but the thing with light gray is it is a more casual suit. However, I'm assuming that you've already got five to six suits in your wardrobe. Maybe you wear suits Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. A great light gray suit is actually in many places, especially during the warmer weather, you're going to be able to pull this off with ease. It's going to break up the monotonous uh, dark colored suits. Another great thing with light colored suits, and I'm not going to get into patterns too much, but as the color gets lighter, you can start to bring in patterns and they're much more visible and you can start to have fun. You can even, you know, with a herringbone, it's, it's going to be a little bit easier to detect. It's going to give it a bit of texture and I really do like the uh, light gray. So, that's why I gave it number four. Now, number five, dark brown. Now, I've heard a few things, you know, don't wear brown in town, you'll hear that rule. I think dark brown, if you have 
brown hair. If you're a little bit darker or if you're red, uh, you've got a little bit of a, of a ruddier complexion, you, blonde hair, you can pull off brown. And this is a great, really, I think it adds a bit of color. Now, the thing with brown is you have to be careful because it is clearly not a formal suit. So don't, if you're visiting someone in New York City, you go into an event, don't wear a brown suit. This is something, maybe you could if you're creative and if everyone is dressed down, but understand this is a bit more casual of a suit color. Number six is going to be tan and tan technically is a shade of brown. However, lighter shade and you can go tan khaki. Uh, I think it was recently President Obama got some attention for wearing a khaki suit. I don't think this should be one of his top ones, but I do think in the right occasion, especially summer, hot weather, warm weather, it is a great secondary right below the light gray suit to have and can spice up a wardrobe, especially if you're a man that wears suits, you know, Monday through Friday. Okay, so number seven, blue, and I'm talking true blue. Now, if you go look at, uh, you know, Prince William, Prince Harry, uh, those guys, they wear this color. It's it's a harder to find. I like this color. If you actually go check out the Prime Minister of Russia, Mendeleev, uh, and uh, Putin, I think, actually pulls this off as well. Seems like the Russians really like this color. This true blue, you see it a lot more over in Europe and parts of Asia. The thing is, and one of the reasons I give it such a low ranking, even though I like it, especially for light colored, red haired, uh, blonde gentlemen. But the reason I give it such a low ranking is it's very hard to find. Most of you all, if you want a suit like this, you're going to have to go custom. There's only a few Holland and Cher I know makes, makes this, uh, this color and uh, but very few uh, companies actually are putting out this type of fabric. So number eight, the white suit. So unless you're Tom Wolf and he made that his signature look, the white suit pretty much is going to be an oddity. It's going to be something that you're going to draw attention right to yourself. Now, if you get invited to a white party, this became, I think, popular in the last couple of years, a white summer party, uh, and you or you really want to draw attention to yourself and you're going to be giving a presentation or a speech, go for it. There you go. Uh, but I would not have it as one of my first 15 suits. So I would probably even a little bit farther down. You're not going to really catch me in a white suit, gentlemen. Now let's talk about patterns. So patterns, again, this is something initially no pattern, but you could, if you really wanted to bring in a pattern to start off with, maybe look at a herringbone. A herringbone weave in a solid fabric actually is not very noticeable until you get up close. It adds a bit of depth, gives a little bit of, little bit of weight to the fabric, so it is going to be a thicker, heavier fabric, but I think it looks absolutely beautiful. You can also look at bringing in, and we see window panes, we see checks, we also see pinstripes. These, when you start to bring these in, understand these are not your interchangeable pieces. These are going to be much more memorable. These are going to be suits that stand out. But if you've already, you already got five suits, you've got six suits, why not bring in a pinstripe? Pinstripes, all about business, window panes, checks, these understand are going to be much more casual. Now, what about small repeating patterns like bird's eye, shark tooth, nail's head? I think that those are perfectly fine, but they are going to be a bit more casual. However, if you already have like three or four suits in your wardrobe, I really like bringing in something like this. It adds a bit of texture. At the same time, from a distance, it actually looks solid and people won't see the pattern until they get up close. Now, something like uh, chalk stripe, this is, maybe if you've already got nine suits, I maybe would make it a tenth, but this is something that really a big pattern like that really is a distinctive pattern. It can really stand out if you know what you're doing, but it's not going to be a suit that you can wear more than once or twice a month. Next up, let's talk about materials and 99% of you want to go with wool. 100% wool is where it's at. You're going to see the word worsted wool. All this simply means is that the wool has been woven into a tight thread and it is perfect for suiting. Beautiful drape, even cheap worsted wools have really come a long way. Now, what you don't want to go with is a blend and a blend is where they put in a little bit of polyester, sometimes 50-50 with wool. Basically, because they're using this material, it is next to nothing in cost and it also just never looks as good. Now, what about silk? What about cotton? What about linen? I think that when blended with wool, you can get some amazing options, but don't do this with a first suit because if you get your first suit, it's got 50% linen or, you know, it, it could just, it's going to require more upkeep. It also can wrinkle more. I do think during the summer, these are interesting options, but for most guys just starting off, go with worsted wool. And now let's talk about fabric cost. And this is important because custom suits, the price, the final price is often based off of what was the cost of the material. So your fabric, it takes about three and a half yards for an average custom suit. This right here can range anywhere from a few dollars per yard to over a thousand dollars 
per yard, depending on the fabric, depending on what mill it comes from, what is in it. So if it's wool versus polyester versus a silk blend versus a very rare wool, they've had actually fabrics woven with a little bit of gold in them. Yes. And those can cost a lot of money. So understand that when a tailor's doing this for him, it's about the same amount of work that goes into it. It's really about the raw materials and how much those cost. So if you want to go with something really rare, if you want to go with something really high end, something that they don't, they don't make that much of, that is going to drive the cost up substantially. However, if you go with the material that they have plenty of, that's a staple, that's classic, you're going to find that the cost is going to be driven down. And let's talk about the super numbers. So you see super 80, super 120, super 220. Understand that none of this is regulated. So one company's super 120 could be another company's super 220, but they do understand, at least the people in sales, that a lot of people view these like megapixels in cameras. So whenever you see a camera with a lot of megapixel, people want to go buy that because it's the newest and greatest. Guys, don't fall for it. Any super like 100, any super 120 is going to be just beautiful, perfectly fine. I would expect in general super 220s as at that range right there to be really nice. And in general, you will see the cost go up as the super number does. Now let's talk about design. And my advice to you is kiss. Keep it simple, silly. Seriously, I've got two dozen suits right here and I will tell you the ones I wear the least are the ones that I got way over complicated on the design. Don't do an eclectic here, eclectic there, changing this up to be different. All of a sudden, you've got something which is a monstrosity. So, when you're looking at the lapels, yeah, I went with peak right here. I had a little bit of fun, but this is pretty much one of two things I had fun on this jacket. But most people, notch lapels are going to be perfectly fine. Peak lapels are going to be a little bit more formal. If you want to go with shawl lapels, that is very rare and you see it more on black tie. But in general, notch lapels are going to be fine. How many buttons in the front? Two in general. 95% of jackets out there are two button. Oh, you can go with a double breasted. Guys, if this is your first custom suit, don't go with a double breasted suit because you don't own any double breasted suits and you don't normally wear them. Don't buy something that again is going to be really pushing you. But there are many things you can change up, by the way, which nobody will see. I talked about my inner lining on my jacket. This is where you can have a lot of fun. Or it could be something small, like the back of the jacket. A lot of people, whenever they buy something off the rack, they got to go with the single vent. I highly recommend you go with the double vent. Doesn't seem like much, but this makes a huge difference in the way the jacket fits and the way it flows whenever you're walking. You can also maybe look at the buttons right here. Make sure you go with working buttons. You may want to go with the contrast stitching. Right here, I went for a little bit of maroon right there. Contrast stitching is another great little thing you can do. Change up the buttons, maybe change up a few things here or there, but guys, overall, keep it simple. And the same thing with the trousers, guys, keep it simple. So if you don't normally have pleats on your trousers, don't buy pleats now. If you don't normally cuff your trousers, go with straight at the bottom hem. One thing I highly recommend is go with suspender buttons on the inside. Nobody's going to see it. You may never even use them, but you always have them there as an option if you want to buy suspenders. Now, if you have the option, I always recommend that you buy an extra set of trousers. Most times when a suit is damaged, it is the trousers. But if you've got two pairs of trousers, you've got that suit and this is your go-to suit, guess what? You've got something that's going to last a lot longer. Just make sure when you send them out to the cleaners that you send them out as a set. And if you get two sets of trousers, consider getting one of them with side taps. So get rid of the belt loops. Instead, it's simply going to cinch up on the sides. I absolutely love this look. Very unique, but something I wouldn't recommend if you only have one pair of trousers because if you gain or lose weight, it can be an issue. Now, what about vests? I absolutely love it. And I recommend that if you want to add some pizzazz to your look, go with a contrasting vest or maybe go with a matching vest. Go for the three-piece suit look if you wear the suit again and again. But I said it this earlier and I want to say it again. The vest is one of the hardest garments to get fit. So make sure that if you're buying this custom that you get this adjusted if it does not fit correctly. Because the vest is one of those things, there's not really much room to give or to loosen up and you want to make sure that you get exactly what you're looking for. Most vests when you go and you buy them off the rack, even if you find the right fit, you're stuck with the style that they give you. When you go custom, you can get styles that you can only dream of. And this is where I do like to have a little bit of fun. You notice right here, four buttons uh, on each side went double-breasted. Double-breasted vests very rare and I knew that they're also incredibly hard to get fitted properly. So, when I had the chance to get one custom from Indochino, you bet I jumped on it and I absolutely love it. Now, I went with a contrasting fabric that I felt worked really well with the brown because it's got a little bit of brown in it and there's another trick when you're looking at maybe matching things. See if you can actually find a fabric that has a little bit, this one, a little bit of that repeating brown. So, because it has the brown, I knew it would naturally match with the brown suit. 
Now, what about custom shirts? Well, if they can make suits, if they can make vests, you bet they can make custom shirts. And so, for me, it's an easy choice when they've got your measurements. That's what I like about choosing one manufacturer, one company to go with. Keep it simple, silly with the design, but have a little bit of fun. I do like to simply go with a classic color. As you guys know, I love white and blue shirts. It's just my, I mean, come on, it just works with everything I have, but there's so many options you can have when it comes to the style of the collar. And that's where you can have so much fun. You can keep the color simple, but you can and change up the style and if you get that fit right, that shirt is going to look amazing on you. All right, so it's been a couple weeks. You get the suit, you get the shirt, you get the vest, you get the trousers. Now let's talk fittings. So this is a very natural part of the process, especially the first time you buy from anyone that's making something custom. You are going to want to have some adjustments made. Now I can tell you what what Indochino sent me is spot on. I'm not going to have anything adjusted. Maybe you know that shirt uh, right here. I will adjust the button. That is it. That's why I love the whole block system. But most of the time, if you're using someone that doesn't use a block system, you're going to have to get some fittings done. But understand adjustments are just part of the process. And so, when you're going through these fittings, it's best if you can go in and actually get them to look at it and make the adjustments so that they can update your profile, your pattern. You want them to make you that one shirt, that one pair of trousers, that one jacket, that one vest and then based off of the adjustments you make, they will then make the rest of your order. Because if you ordered 10 shirts, if you ordered 5 suits, you don't want to get 5 that are the wrong size or too tight in the chest. Some places they'll have you actually go, if you buy it online, they'll have you go to a local tailor. So, you want to call around, make sure that that person can adjust the suit. If it's too much, if it's a major adjustment, you're probably going to have to ship it back to them along with photos and along with what needs to be done. But that is why communication is so key and I feel it's underrated because when it comes the adjustments, this is when the magic happens and you go from really good to friggin amazing. So, now we're talking about fit. Let me be clear. Fit is king. Do not buy a suit that does not fit you well or cannot be adjusted to fit you well. Here's the deal. If you buy a $2,000 suit that doesn't fit you, it's not going to look good. A $50 suit that fits you well is going to look much much better than anything that doesn't fit you. So, fit is what you got to zero in on. If you have to pay more, then go ahead and do that to get something that fits your really thin body, your really big body. That's why I said custom suits may be an option for some of you that are a bit shorter, maybe you're really stout, maybe you're just a huge guy. It, whatever it may be, you may have to go that route to get something that fits your body right. So, when you're buying the jacket, this is the area that you want to focus in on. First up, the shoulders. Does it fit you well in the shoulders? You don't want to get the shoulders adjusted. That's like heart surgery. It's just going to cost you a lot of money and it's better just to buy a jacket that fits you well in the shoulders. Next up, let's look in the chest. Let's look in the torso. If you've got too much room here and we're talking you can fit in two fists, that's way too much room, you probably want to size down a bit. Now, they can bring it in a bit in the torso, but more than two inches, the issue here are proportions. So, the pockets are going to kind of change and it's just going to make the jacket not look good. What about letting out a jacket? What about opening it up? Yes, on higher end suits, they should have some extra fabric in there so you can open it up about an inch. If you find a suit that fits you really well, just a little bit tight in the chest, you can go ahead and open it up. Now, the length. There are two areas you're going to want to check. First, put your arms down and basically your knuckles should be about the length of the jacket, give or take an inch. Now, the other area you're going to want to check is the back of the jacket. Does it cover the curvature of your buttocks? It should cover your butt. If the jacket's exposing your butt or it's going way past that, it's probably too long or too short. Now, let's talk about the sleeves. This is actually one of the easiest places to adjust up to about an inch and a half to in some cases two inches. Really depends on the size of the suit, but you want to be able to show about a quarter to a half an inch of your shirt cuff. Now, let's talk about the trousers. So, trousers are sold with the jacket. They come as a pair and you want to make sure that it fits you well in the waist. If it's a little bit too big, a little bit too tight. This can be opened up. It can be tightened up. Also, pay attention to the hip area. This is oftentimes where a lot of tailors, they don't want to maybe adjust here or they say it's not worth it. No, if it's way too loose, get it brought in. Now, let's look at the trouser length. So, you got some options here. You can go with no break. You can go with a quarter break. You can go with a half break. You can go with a full break. Now, what to do here really depends on your personal preference and your height. If you're a taller guy, you want to go with a full break. If you're a shorter guy, go with no break. 
So now we're going to talk about the style of the suit. My goal here is to help you create something that's going to be timeless that will serve you six months from now and six years from now versus something that is more of a fashion trend that's going to be out of style here in the next year. So when you're going to buy a suit, you're going to notice there are two button suits, there are three button suits, there are also some four button suits, and there are even one button suits. One button suits, four button or five button suits, stay away from at this point two or three buttons are going to be your options. And for 95% of you, you want to go with the two button suit. Now, why would anyone go with a three button suit? A three button suit is going to be a little bit more formal. And there are also suits out there called two and a half. So if you're at a higher end menswear store, you may see it. And I like the two and a half because it just goes up a little bit higher. It's basically a three button suit that's not made to actually button that top button. Next up, you're going to want to pay attention to the lapel. You're going to see notch lapels. You're going to see peak lapel. You're going to see shawl lapels. Shawl lapels, don't touch. That's formal wear. Peak lapels, those are nice, but they're going to be more formal and they're also something to grab a bit of attention. I think they're fine if you really like the look, but I would recommend just simply going with a notch lapel. It's not going to win any awards for creativity, but it is something that's going to be timeless and be in style in a decade. Now let's look at pockets. They're going to be two main styles. You've got the pockets that are sewn into the jacket and then you've got the pockets that are sewn on top of the jacket. The ones sewn on top are known as patch pockets. They're very casual at this point. Let's avoid those. Go for the kind that are actually sewn in. They should have a flap. That's what you're looking for. Next up, let's talk about vents. So this is going to be the back area of the jacket. You're going to see the single vent, the double vent, and the no vent. The no vent's pretty rare. You'll see it on some custom suits, maybe some Italian suits. I think it looks fine if you definitely don't put your hands in your pockets and if you wanted to create a more slim profile. Most of us, though, are going to see the single vent. This is something I understand why manufacturers do this. It's relatively inexpensive, but to me, it's the worst looking of all the vents and you would rather go for the double vent. Why? Because when you're walking, it creates a more streamlined look. When you put your hand in your pocket with that single vent, all of a sudden your backside is exposed. When you have that double vent, no such thing happens. So now let's talk about all the other details that come with a suit. Understand it's like a chain. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So if you've got a weak part with all these other details, understand it can really weaken the entire look. We don't want that. So let's get into first the dress shirt. The dress shirt in general should be white. This is going to be the classic color. It's going to easily match with any of the, the different colors I talked about. It's going to work. Another option would be light blue. You could also go with, you know, pink. You could go with lavender, but I'm going to recommend you go with white. It's the most formal. It's going to create the highest contrast and it's going to match pretty much anything you put on it. Now with the selection of that white shirt, you want to make sure it fits you in the neck area. That's key because you're going to button it up. You're going to wear it with a necktie. You also want to make sure it's got a turned down collar in a medium spread or a point. Point is going to be classic that works with most necktie knots, but if you like to tie a little bit wider of a knot, you can go for a medium spread. Don't go for a wide spread. That's a more casual style of collar. In addition, avoid button down collars. They're nice, but they're ultra casual. Next up, let's talk cuffs. So the shirt cuffs should be a single button. You can also go for a two button if you get something custom made. And what about cufflinks? I think cufflinks are fine, but you really need to have a bit of attitude. They make it a little bit more formal of a style and you really need to know how to wear them. Not recommended for your first suit. And this may seem obvious, but I've seen some guys break this rule. Your dress shirt must always be tucked in. The only exceptions, I guess if you got into a fight, you're arrested, you're getting put in the back of that police car. In that case, okay, your dress shirt's untucked. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm not going to bail you out either. Unless it's Matt, Ricky, Chris, Aaron, or Ryan, I'll bail you guys out. Next up, we've got shoes. The classic is going to be a black Balmoral Oxford with a closed lacing system. A closed lacing system is when the back quarter goes underneath the front part, which is the vamp. This is going to be your classic go-to shoe. But what if you want to change it up? You're like, Antonio, I don't like black. I want to go maybe with a darker brown, a chestnut brown. That's fine. This is going to be a more casual shoe though, understand, because it's got an open lacing system and it's just lighter in color. So this whole style right here, you could pull this off of the suit, but understand it's not going to be as formal. What about sneakers? Unless you're a rock star or you really have it, you know, the attitude going, I would recommend no. I think some guys can pull it off and I'm not, you know, I'm not here to judge. Go for it. Now, what about something like this? Again, it's a lighter brown, but guess what? The style is pretty good. We've got a closed lacing system. You could wear this as well. Now, when it comes to loafers, I try to avoid them except for casual suits. So I'm not going to recommend them in this case, but uh, this one, you could pull it off, especially in the United States at a casual event. If you were wearing a suit, probably no one's going to say anything. Now, let's 
talk about neckwear. So classically, a suit is worn with neckwear. It just naturally goes together. It ties the outfit together. I think red is always a safe color unless it's a bright neon red. Don't go with any neons. But right here, I've got this red with a small repeating pattern. Now notice the blue in the pattern. It actually works with the suit. That's why I went with this combination. I love this look. But you could also bring in a regimental stripe. This is another classic stripe that you can bring in. This is going to be just as formal. Now, this goes back actually to the English. They had certain clubs. They had military regiments that this represented. This one for me represents the United States Marine Corps. Actually, I had this tie custom made. I love it right there. But you can also bring in a dark green. You could bring in purple, the color of kings. Again, small repeating patterns. I've got a dot here. I've got, I don't know exactly what pattern it is, but it's small and it's repeating. But we start to get a little bit more casual when we bring in these brighter colors. This one, what I recommend, you can pull it off, but I, you know, it's not going to be as formal. And then we've got some very casual neckties. And that's where you want to be careful. Don't try to pull these in. These are casual. So this one made, it's got a knit material. This one, that bright orange. We've got a wool necktie. I've got a floral necktie. Now, bow ties. I know a lot of you guys love bow ties. And technically, bow ties are just as formal as a long necktie. So if you went with maybe a solid color, yes, it would be just fine. You would not break any rules. But understand you would stand apart and maybe at a wedding, it would be fine. But at a funeral, you'd have to make a judgment call. I think it would actually be fine if it's part of your normal attire. But understand, bow ties draw a little bit more attention. But if you're cool with that, go for it. So what about jewelry? We're talking watches. We're talking rings. We're talking necklaces. I'm talking nose piercings, earrings. For me, it's about keeping it muted and not going over the top. Now, if you that's your personality, you're a rock star, you are you know a tattoo artist, and you've got piercings all over, then go for it. That's you. But for most situations, most people, we're going to want to keep it a bit more subdued. Now, when it comes to dress watches, what you're looking for is a watch that just simply tells you the time, maybe the date, and really nothing else. So you don't want a lot of complications. Classic dress watches, they're going to have a leather strap, either in black or a dark brown. So, you know, this right here is, is a classic. Well, actually, this one is a racing strap. So you notice the small holes. All of a sudden, this one, because of the complications, it's got a chronograph, all those other details. This is not going to be a dress watch. You could wear it. You could pull it off. No one's going to say anything, but traditionally, dress watches are simple. Now, I go with ones with a metal band. I just simply like it. I didn't like the leather straps. It was just, but you could go with one that has a simple face, maybe with a few numbers on it. Again, you want to keep it simple. What you don't want to do is bring in dive watches that are clearly made to be worn as sport watches. What you're looking to do is to keep and tone it down when it comes to your jewelry. And gentlemen, don't forget grooming. Remember, we're talking about a chain. It's only as strong as its weakest link. If you don't shower, if you've got dirty nails, it doesn't matter how well you dress, no one's going to think that you're looking good. So clean those nails cut those nails. Take care of your skin. Wear a lotion on your hands, on your face if your skin's flaking. Make sure that you shave or if you've got a beard, groom it. Make sure it's nice and clean and looking good. Let's talk about your hair. Make sure your hair is looking good. I really like it when you use products and again, because you're dressed in sharp, you can actually bring in a bit of shine. I think it gives a good look but really, Go with what works for you, but take care of that grooming. Next up, let's talk about pocket squares. Go with a simple cotton or linen, fold it over, and go with the nice square presidential fold. Very simple, very classic, very conservative. Looks great. Guys, that's all you need. When it comes to socks, don't overthink this. If you are in doubt at all, just go with simple, dark, black. Go with something newer. You don't want to go with faded socks that have holes. If you want to have fun, you want to bring in a little bit of color, maybe bring in a dark colored maroon, a dark green. Be careful, especially if you're going into an interview with something way too flashy. I mean, if you want to show your personality, I guess it would be fine. But if you're not confident, don't wear it. Now, gents, even if you have a perfectly fitted suit, you have to avoid these mistakes at any cost. Tip number one, Trust your gut. If you try on a suit, you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't like it, you can't maybe put your finger on exactly why. Do not buy that suit. Buy the suit that's going to make you feel like a million bucks. When you put this thing on, it's like a suit of armor. This suit is there to support you, to make you look great. It should build up your shoulders. It should trim up your waistline. It should make you look taller. You should feel like a million bucks. And if you don't, do not buy the suit. Trust your gut. My point, as a man, you are responsible for yourself and how you look and the message you send to the world. So make sure that you buy something that looks great on you, not something that maybe just looks okay or some guy's trying to push on you. 
Mistake number two, not knowing what a suit truly is. A suit is a jacket and trousers made from the same fabric that match each other. Now, a lot of guys think, oh, I can save money, go to a thrift store, buy a navy jacket, maybe with black trousers, and they're close, right? Guys, that is an odd trouser, odd jacket combination. It can work in certain circumstances unless it calls for a suit. That is not a suit. And side note for my Canadian friends, yes, if you're wearing a jean jacket with jeans that are made from the same material, that technically is a suit, the Canadian tuxedo. Suit mistake number three, not removing your tack stitching strategically. This is the stitching on a new jacket that prevents damage in transport. So you're going to see it on the lapels. You're going to see it on the pockets, especially the breast pocket. You're going to see it on the back vents. But when you get the jacket, you start to wear it, especially the first time, you want to remove the tack stitching. But there are areas where you don't want to remove it. Specifically, it's going to be the pockets right here. If you're going to use those pockets, that's fine. Then go ahead and remove it. But if you're never going to use these pockets, and I think this is for most men, and it's actually going to maintain kind of a nicer, sleeker look, then don't remove the tack stitching. Now let's talk about the breast pocket. I think you should remove it because you want to put it in a pocket square. And the vents, you definitely want to remove it because this is visible oftentimes from the outside and you want the vents to be able to function. Mistake four, not removing tags, especially that sleeve tag. Now, you may have bought this from a designer from a higher end fashion brand and you really like the fact that it says the name there, but remove it. It does not belong there. I see guys walking around, especially with a new suit with the tag left there. No, you want to remove it. That's not like a brand label that needs to be seen. It's something that should be taken right off. Mistake number five is buying a suit for the wrong occasion. So, you've got an interview coming up with a manufacturing company. Understand that you don't need to wear most likely a suit unless you're applying for a managerial job. You're going to be at an executive level. But the point is, is not everyone's going to need to buy a suit right out of college or right going into an interview. Now, I do think every man needs to own a suit because you've got important events where you need to look like a million bucks to be able to show respect or to be able to show that you basically fit the part, that you will fit into that culture. But I think a dark suit that fits you well is great for any man. In summary, I think every man should own a suit, but I don't want you to rush out there and go buy one for an occasion in which you don't need it. Mistake number six, and I bet a lot of you guys are surprised I didn't start off with this one, but fit. Fit is king. When you buy a suit, it has to fit you. It has to fit you in the shoulder points. It has to fit you in the chest area, which you can get adjusted a little bit. You can get it adjusted in the stomach area. So, you want to make sure when you buy the suit, it fits you as close to perfect as possible. Need help with suit fit? Guys, I've got a video I'm going to link to down in the description with also a complete infographic. So, if you want to look at pictures, you want to watch a video, I've got you covered. Now, these next two points, I'm going to bring them together. Don't buy fashion suits and make sure you buy for function. So, let's talk about fashion suits. And I say don't buy if you know what you're doing, you want to change it up, you want to bring in something that's going to grab attention. Go for a fashion suit. Why not? Spend your money there, but understand within a year, within two years, definitely within three years, that suit, you can really, if you're wearing it, you're going to be out of fashion. So now moving over and talking about function. The mistake I see here is that most guys don't think through what function do they want their suit to serve. But I think for most guys, what they're looking for is something that is going to send the signal of trust, something that's going to be in style for a decade. You look at Cary Grant, pull him out of a picture from 1950, and this guy still looks stylish. Again, nothing against the fashion suits or if you want to bring in colors, you want to bring in fun patterns, you want to bring in different style aspects. But understand the function of that suit. Is it something you're in the banking industry? Well, in that case, probably classic conservative in most cities. Or if you're going to be in a creative industry, then have fun there. Next up, let's talk about fabric and build quality. So, when you go out there and you look at suits, you're going to see the different types of fabrics. Understand, there isn't a standard here. So, it's kind of like megapixels on cameras. Don't think that just because you're going to get more megapixels on that camera, you're going to be able to take better pictures. The same thing with suits. Just because it's a Super 220, that doesn't mean it's better than a Super 180 or even a Super 120. Touch the fabric. Actually look at it. Ask the person selling it, what's the build quality? And the build quality is going to be everything inside the suit. Does it have a floating canvas? Those little details like that. What's inside the suit, you can't see. You've got to trust on the manufacturer, the brand, where it's coming from. One of the best deals I find, especially if a man starting off, is to go to a box store. 
Wait till they've got a great sale. Find a suit that maybe normally sells for $600, $700. Try it on, look at yourself in the mirror, and then wait till it goes on sale at maybe half that price. That way you can jump on it, know it's a great deal. Another tip is to go into the best menswear store in your area and try on that $1,000 suit. Feel what a nice fabric really feels like. Look at that fit. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at the build quality and look at the way it fits your body and be like, wow, I look great. Another thing, when you've tried on those great looking suits, those great feeling suits, when you're at another store, you're like, wow, that is on sale 50% off. It looks just like the suit I tried on. You put it on, you're like, this is a great deal. So by trying on high quality, you can then better spot high quality. Next up, practice wearing the suit. So when you buy this nice suit, don't just hang it up and only wear it for that special occasion. You want to make sure to wear it in and around your house. Why would you wear it around your house? Because you want to get used to the feel. You want to get used to the look or you just simply want to get used to this feeling of having something on your shoulders wearing a suit like this. Because if you don't, then you're wearing a costume. And that's the key is when you're, you're practicing wearing this, you start to realize, wow, this has a good effect to me. I like the way I feel in that suit. And when you put on something you like, you put on something that you love, you feel great and you perform better. Now, this other mistake has nothing to do with the suit. It has everything to do with what you pair with it. The shirt, the shoes, your grooming, the way you take care of yourself. Understand that the suit is just a link in a chain and a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Actually buy all the other pieces that you need to have the full outfit so you look like a million bucks. Pay attention to your grooming, take care of your teeth, take care of your hair. All of these things play into that overall look, that image that you're wanting to present because when you put on a suit, you want to look and feel like a million bucks. You've got an important event that you're going to, that you want to perform at, that you want to show respect for. So make sure that you've got the whole package. So at this point, you've now got a perfectly fitted suit. You've got a great looking shirt. You've got a good looking vest. You have an outfit which makes you feel like a million bucks. What to do now? Wear it. Gentlemen, the most expensive clothing you'll ever own is the clothing you never wear. Wear it so many times that eventually you have to go get more. I know when I dress sharp, even if I'm at home, if I've got a big call, if I've got a big meeting, I dress better. Why do I do this? Because it puts me in the zone. It makes me feel better and studies have shown that actually dressing the part, you feel better. You perform better. The scientific term is called enclosed cognition and this is when your clothing has an effect on how you see yourself and how you perform. It's real, gentlemen. So suit up, dress sharp, and become the man you know yourself to be. So what video to watch next? How about custom versus off the rack suits? In this video, I break out the advantages and disadvantages of each type of suit.